Hello and welcome to this Getting Started video introduction to the Heliocentris Hybrid Energy Lab. The user interface of the application software is structured into four parts. The menu provides access to all configuration and setting dialogues as well as to advanced model and data analysis functions in the theory menu. The control area on the left offers direct and permanent manual control over the system components, like the fuel cell, the DC-DC converter, or the electronic load. The status bar on the bottom is also permanently visible, just as the selection buttons for the main view on the top. As we will see, the various views provide advanced visualization of the system and its components. The selected view provides a P&I diagram type of overview of the system and its sensors. We have the hydrogen supply on the bottom, the energy conversion chain via fuel cell and DC-DC converter on the right, feeding into the DC bus on the top. Also connected to the bus are the battery, a DC electronic load and an AC converter. To see real data, we first need to connect to an actual system. To do so, we open the system connection dialog from the file menu. The TCIP connection to the configured address is established by pressing connect. In the status bar, we can now see the connected system and the active battery configuration. We also see an undervoltage warning of the DC-DC converter, which is OK if the fuel cell is not running. Back to the battery, which is a central part of a hybrid system. With the Hybrid Energy Lab, it is easy to manage different battery configurations. So after connecting, the battery settings dialog opens automatically. On the left side, we can see the battery configuration that is active on the system. On the right side, available configurations of the application software are shown. These are part of the preferences and stored persistently. Usually, the configuration is directly mapped to the active one, as indicated by this indicator. In that case, we can directly proceed with Done. We also have the options to change the active configuration using the Set Active button or to copy the active configuration to a local one with the Copy button. File import and export is also possible. It is mandatory to use charging parameters suitable for the actual battery, as the charging function of the DC-DC converter is configured accordingly. The battery model settings are required for SOC calculation. They are optional in the sense that they are not used by any system control function, including the hybrid energy management in automatic operation. Let's assume the settings are correct for our battery and let's proceed with Done. In the system overview, we can now see the live data. The power balance of the DC bus shows that the system operation is powered by the battery. This can also be seen in the energy flow view, which is depicting the energy conversion chain by means of a real-time Sankey diagram, where the width of the connection is proportional to the power. Let's activate the electronic load. The battery, being the only source to the DC bus, has to cover also for any additional loads. This is the first basic operation of the hybrid system. Let's call it battery operation. In the battery view, we can see the real-time visualization of the battery operating point. It is displayed on the V over state of charge characteristic curve, which is calculated from the model for the actual battery current. Details of the battery model are subject to a separate video. Let's just note that we are on the discharging branch of this diagram. Before activating the fuel cell, let's switch to the fuel cell view, where we can see a detailed P&I diagram 
with all relevant readings. The charts on the left provide a real-time visualization of the operating point on the voltage, power and efficiency characteristic curves. Details on the underlying model are again subject to a separate video. After the startup sequence, the fuel cell is self-powered and the output is active. However, there is no output power provided to the DC bus, as we can see also from the energy flow. To close the connection, we need to activate the DC-DC converter. The loads are now supported out of the fuel cell, and the battery is charged according to the battery configuration. When switching to the battery view, we can see the operating point closing in to the charging branch. But let's have a closer look at the energy flow. The energy conversion chain starts with the hydrogen power equivalent calculated from the gas flow. Next, we have the fuel cell stack with its electric and heat output as well as Faradayic losses. Operation loads for the fuel cell module and the system are depicted as well as losses of the DC converter feeding into the DC bus. The efficiency at different steps of the chain is directly displayed in percent of the input power. So this is the second basic operation of the hybrid system. Let's call it generator operation. By limiting the DC-DC output, we can demonstrate the third basic operation of a hybrid system. Let's call it boost operation since the battery boosts the generator. To study the operation modes from the perspective of the DC-DC converter, we go back to the generator operation and switch to the DC-DC view. The readings and active settings are displayed on the left. The settings can be accessed directly, invoking the same dialogues as from the menu. The DC-DC output is primarily configured via the charging parameters and the maximum output current. On the chart, the operating point of the overall output is displayed as closed circle in relation to its configured limits. The open circle depicts the battery fraction of the output in relation to its limits. In this case, the constant current limit of the CC charging phase. In the chart on the lower half, the operating point of the input in relation to its limits is depicted. You can also activate the respective other working point to visualize the shift done by the DC-DC converter. When limiting the output, we can see how the limits close in and the operating points are following. This way, the DC-DC output, defining the generator output, can be controlled just as the DC load, providing a system to study arbitrary scenarios. It is also possible to automate the controls via the software API, but this is subject to a separate video. We now want to automate the controls 
by predefined profiles. But first, let us start the data acquisition in the file menu. The name for the CSV file is proposed automatically. The active acquisition is indicated in the status bar. In the file menu, we now invoke the generator profile dialog. Let us reiterate the example profile. After starting the profile with run, we can observe the progress in the control area. The load can be automated in a similar way. Finally, let's have a look at the time chart, where the history of the data is displayed. The plots can be selected individually. For convenience, there are predefined selections for various fields of interests, like energy management. There are also two customer selections that are part of the preferences and therefore stored persistently. Charts with many plots can become quite busy. By clicking on a plot or its name, they can be identified together with the relevant scale. And that concludes the video introduction to the Hybrid Energy Lab. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful.